Hi there, this is Andrew Perkins for Tuts Plus, and today we're going to continue where we left off last time. If you remember, we learned how to build reusable forms in Symfony 2. In this video, we'll learn how to validate the data that has been submitted to our form to ensure it's in the correct format, meets our data's requirements, and then we'll process the form submission accordingly. I'm going to switch into Firefox real quick. Currently, our form only displays itself. If we leave the email and the full name form fields blank and then submit the form, we get no validation besides the in-browser validation, the HTML5 validation. We don't have any server-side validation going on here. So it's pretty much just a useless form. So let's get started making this form actually work. I'm going to switch into my text editor. Now, in the last video, we created a person class stored in our Acme Demo Bundle Entity folder. So that's under Source, Acme, Demo Bundle, Entity. And here's that person class that we created. Now, in our person class, we have two properties, a person's email and full name. And then we also have some getter and setter methods for each of these properties. Now, the form that we built will allow us to create new people using this person class by taking the email and full name entered into the form and using that data along with these getter setter methods to create a new person. But this doesn't ensure that the data that came from the form is in the proper format for creating a valid person. Now, what determines a valid person or any valid object for that matter? Well, that's up to you and your application's requirements. Here I want to make sure that this is a valid email address and that the full name field is not blank. This makes sure that I at least get a real email and a name for this new person. To validate our data, we'll simply apply validation rules, or as Symfony likes to call them, constraints, to each of our person's properties. To apply these constraints, we're going to need to use a new built-in Symfony 2 class for each one. You can manually load in any of the individual constraints one at a time, but if you're going to be using multiple constraints, it's easier to just include them all and give them an easy to use alias so that you can reference them. Symfony 2 uses the assert alias, so I'll just stick with that. Let's add the following use statement after our namespace. And with this statement, we can now access any of the constraints, such as an email constraint to ensure a field is a valid email address, or a not blank constraint to ensure a field is not blank, as well as many others. To do this, we'll use annotation validation, where we simply put a couple of comments above each of our properties, setting our validation constraints inside the comment. It's really easy. Let's first put a multi-line comment right above our email property. Let's now add a not blank constraint to this email property's comment, like so. This will now ensure our email field is not blank when the form is submitted. Let's try adding another constraint to ensure that it's also a valid email address. There we go. Now let's also validate our full name property, just like we did for the email. So I'm just going to copy this and let's paste it above the full name property. And we'll just get rid of the email constraint as we're not going to need that. And we'll just use the not blank constraint. All right, perfect. Now there's lots of other built-in constraints that you can use to validate your data with. Feel free to give the others a test run, but this is good for now. So we've applied our constraints to our person properties. Let's now move on to processing the form submission by ensuring the form data meets these constraints before we do anything else with the data, such as creating a new person or giving the user a success message. Make sure to save your person class and we can close that out. Let's now switch into our main controller. So under controller, let's open up maincontroller.php. The first thing that we need to do is inside of our index action which is where our form is going to submit to when we attempt to process the form submission. What we need to do is get the request data so that we can access the data that was submitted from the form. We do this by calling the controller's get method and passing request in as a string, and then just storing it into a new request variable. I'll add this in right after our form variable. We now have access to the request object in our action using this request variable. Now we need to have our form handle the request by calling its handle request method and passing the request object into it. There we go. Next, we need to check if this is a post request so that we know whether or not the form was submitted and whether we should process the form. We do this using our request object's get method method and checking if it's equal to post. If it is, we know the form has been submitted and we need to validate the data. 
So that if statement would look like this right after our handle request statement. Now inside this if statement, we need to determine if the submitted form data meets our constraints. We do this by calling the form objects is valid method within another conditional. There we go. If the form is valid, we can then do whatever we need to do with our data, such as create a new person using our person class, and then we'd save this user into a database and probably redisplay back the information that they entered so that the user can see it. But since we haven't learned about databases yet, redirecting flash messages, etc., I'm just going to return a response back, a success message, saying that the person was created, as we know our validation did pass. There we go. So you can see I just returned a new response with the string saying the person was created. And that'll be displayed to the user should the form pass validation. Now to use this response class here, we need to include it at the top of our file. So after our person type, let's add another use statement here. All right, we have our response class. Let's go back down here to our if statement for the is valid method. Now if the form is not valid after our if statement, using the exact same render statement from below, this one down here where it displays our template file. I'm just going to copy this. We're just going to re-display the form. So just copy it and let's paste it inside of the other if statement above. Okay, now when this is called, since we used a form template and the form row methods to create our form, when the page is re-displayed, it'll automatically display our validation error messages if there are any. This will allow the user to attempt to fix the problems and resubmit the form. Now, lastly, to check that our server-side validations work without the HTML5 browser validations firing beforehand, like we saw at the beginning of the lesson, thus stopping us from testing our server-side validation, I'm going to disable HTML5 validation on our form. And we do this inside of our template file where the form was rendered. So let's open that up under source, Acme demo bundle, resources, views, main, open up index.html.twig. And now down here inside of our form start method, we need to set the forms no validate attribute to no validate, passing in an attribute option in Twig like this. There we go. Now, after you test that your server side validation is working, which we'll do in just a moment, you can come back in here and remove this if you'd prefer that client side validation works as well. But that's it. We're finished. Make sure to save all of your files. Let's save the controller. And also make sure that your server is running. And let's switch back into Firefox. Now I'm just going to reload this page here. And so now let's try submitting an empty form to test the not blank constraints. I'll just hit submit. Excellent. Here's our validation error messages. It says this value should not be blank. This value should not be blank. Now let's try entering in an invalid email address and a full name. So let's put in a fake email here, but let's make it incorrect. So I'll leave out the decimal point and then a full name, fake name. Let's hit submit. All right, so full name has now passed, but we can see that this is saying it's not a valid email address. So now let's try making it valid. We'll put the decimal point back in here, fake at gmail.com and hit submit. And perfect. We now get our success message saying that the person was created and we now know the validation has passed. And with that, we now have a working form that validates our data and displays the validation error messages back to the user. So that's it for working with forms. Next up, we'll learn how to interact with a database in Symfony 2. Thanks for watching.